How often when working with Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations, do you need to do an integration with a third party system? If you're like me and you're a consultant and work multiple projects over the years, it comes up really often. You're always needing to get data from one system into Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. So luckily today with the tools we have available to us, that becomes a very easy task to do. And we're, that's what we're gonna take a look at today is how we can do that. This is Dynamics Post and I'm Scott Gaines. And what I try to do on this channel is give you clear instructional videos on, on how to do different Dynamics 365 finance and operation topics. So today what we're gonna be taking a look at is an integration between a third party system and finance and operations that you can write yourself with, with no code. If you think about it five years ago or probably even three years ago, Integration, any sort of integration was a was kind of a major deal. There was a coding had to be done. You, you know, you have to have a programmer that go into Visual Studio, change your X plus plus code, write the integration, and and then promote it and all the, all that goes along with it. But today, with the tools that are available to us, we can do this ourselves as functional people with no code. It's, it's actually pretty simple. So what we're going to walk through today is how we can do a simple file integration. So it'd be an inbound file integration with Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. Where you'd use this would be like if you're trying to create journals, you know, maybe you're doing expense journals or payroll journals or any kind of inbound file that you need to process. So this wouldn't be a real-time integration, but a, an integration that would be based on a file that you're going to, going to pull. So let's go over to, to the screen here. And the, the document that I used to base this tutorial on is, is this one here. I'll paste the link to it in the uh, video description, but this is where I'm getting all of my, my different reference material and, and we'll be referring back to it um, while, while this is going on. So it's pretty easy, several steps here. So what we want to do first is we're going to create our security. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the Azure portal and what you want to do is you want to go into uh, the Azure Active Directory and then you want to go into App Registrations and you want to create a new registration. And I'm going to name this registration um, File Import Export because I can use the same one for export and go and hit register. And then once I get in here, I'm going to go to Clients and uh, Certificates and Secrets I'm going to create a new client secret. Again, I'm just going to call this file import and export. And I'm just going to let it expire in six months, but you have options here to look at different expiration dates. And I'll hit add there. Now, if you've never created a client secret, what you want to do is you want to make sure you grab the value right now. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And I've got a, a notepad over here to the left, and I'm going to paste that into here. I'll, I'll show you the notepad in just a second. Okay, so once we have our, our app registration done in, in the Azure portal, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this client ID, I'm going to go ahead and copy it here, and I'm going to go over to Dynamics. And the first thing I want to do is go into Dynamics is I'm going to go into the System Administration and then the Azure Active Directory Applications, go ahead and click in there, and then I'm going to go New, and I'm going to add it, and then I'm going to put in the uh, user ID there. That I'm going to use. This is going to control the data. So if you've done any kind of warehouse management work or, or anything where you're using any external apps, you're probably pretty familiar with this process I just showed you, but uh, I just wanted to show you how you created these, these app registrations. Okay, then we'll go ahead and save that and then I'll go back home. Now go ahead and keep your, you know, we've got our client secret that I copied off. Go ahead and keep that over here on the Azure portal. Keep that up because we're going to need this other information here in a minute. The next thing we're going to do is on the dynamic side is we're going to create a recurring data job. So the file that I'm going to use today is just going to be a vendor file, but just know that it could be any file or you can do this with a file or a package. Read in the documentation, you can, you can do it with either. Um, you just construct your package or, I'm, again, I'm just going to do an Excel file here, but I'm using a vendor file to do this. I'm not really going to show the data, uh, the records afterwards. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to show you the the file's uploading and it's going to process correctly there. All right, so what I want to go is into the data management workspace. I'm going to click in here. And what we want to do is we're going to create a, a new import job. So I'm going to go and hit import. And let's just call this uh, vendor import for description as well. Project category, I'll go ahead and give this one an integration designation. And then we're going to go ahead and add our file. 
So I'm going to use, again, the vendors. I'm going to use the vendors v2 file. My format's going to be Excel, and then I'm going to go ahead and pick my file. And we're going to go vendors, and then go ahead and open. And that's going to upload and add that to our project here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. So we have our vendor file there. Now what you should do is go ahead and um, import this just to make sure that it, that it runs okay. So let's just do that just for completeness there. Just go ahead and we'll import that. What I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll go ahead and import it. I'll pause the video and then we'll come back when it's done importing and, and we'll pick it back up. All right, so my import job is done. I've got my check mark. I know that my job is working now. I just That's just good best practice. Go ahead and do the import first to make sure it works and then, then we can proceed. So what I'm gonna do is here, I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a recurring data job. So we're gonna click on create recurring data job. We're gonna give it a name. We're gonna call it vendor import. We could give it a description if we wanted to. We're gonna paste that application ID that we used, the client ID from, from the Azure portal in there and go ahead and enable that. And, you know, depending on whether or not we're gonna use a file or package, we need to specify that there. We're gonna use a file, so that's fine. So next thing we need to do is, is set how often it's gonna monitor for a file, and then how often it's gonna process that file. So we're gonna set the monitoring recurrence. On this, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to every minute. You'd obviously, if you're doing it in this real life, you know, you maybe wanna do this once an hour, or once every 15 minutes or something, don't run it every minute. Um, and then go ahead and hit okay. And then the processing recurrence, I'm going to set it again. Same, same concept there. Don't set it to, you know, to just run and run and run and run. So we'll go ahead and say OK to that. It's going to enable it. We'll go ahead and say yes to that. And we're, we've got our, our job running. Now, one thing we need to get here is we need to go over here to manage and then manage recurring jobs. One of the pieces of information we need to get is this ID. So let's go ahead and copy that. And we'll paste. I'm just going to copy that. And... So we have it and put it on my notepad here. So let me drag my notepad into the screen here. And what we're gonna do with that ID is, I'm getting this URL from the document I showed you earlier. So if we go back to the Microsoft doc and we scroll down, what we're doing today is the NQ, not the DQ. The DQ is the download side. We'll do that in next week's video. But here's kind of the format. So you've got the base URL this is, we need all this. Now the activity ID is what we just copied from the job and then the entity name right there. So what I've kind of done already for us in my little scratch pad here is here's my base URL for my uh, trial instance. And then I've, I've gone ahead and put in the vendors V2 entity here. So the percent 20 is just a, is just a space. So um, in the URL, so we can make sure that because it's vendor space, your uh, V2 should so just put the percent 20 there if you've got spaces. So here, let me go ahead and copy just, I don't want the brackets, I just want the ID. And here I, I put these brackets in there for placeholders. I'm gonna paste it in there like that. And that's gonna give us the URL that we're gonna upload our file to, all right? So now we have that, we're actually getting real close to the home stretch. So the mechanism that we're going to use to move the file from our starting point to Dynamics 365 is um, Microsoft, uh, flow, right? So you can use either flow or if you're used to using dot, uh, logic apps, you can use logic apps. I'm just using uh, flow just, just because it's, it's easier for me here, but you can use logic apps. It doesn't matter. It's same, they're based on each other. Flow sits on top of logic apps. So you can use them the same way. All right. So let's go ahead and open up Power Automate and we'll create a new flow. And we'll go in, we'll do an instant cloud flow. And I'm gonna skip the trigger for just a second. We'll build this manually here. So what I'm gonna to do today, the, the, the place where I'm gonna drop my file is my OneDrive folder. Now again, this is where you have a lot of flexibility. You can use any of the triggers that are in Power Automate. So I'm gonna use a OneDrive connector, but you think SharePoint, if you can use a SharePoint connector, Azure Blob Storage, any of those type connectors you can use for this. So it's, it's up to you how you're gonna get the file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click up here and we'll type in OneDrive. And that'll give me the OneDrive. And then I wanna do when a file is created, I want it to trigger it. So I've got this pointed to my OneDrive. So I should have a upload folder. I want it to look in this upload folder there. So anytime I 
drop a file into that upload folder and it creates, it's going to trigger this flow to run. So the only other step that you're going to need is an HTTP request action. So don't be scared off by this. This is not too bad. We're going to use the HTTP. And the method that we're going to use is post. And then we're going to put in that URL that we created in our notepad. So let's go ahead and pull up our notepad. So the URL is going to be the URL here. So we can copy that. Come back over here. This is going to be the, you put the URL in there. And then the body here needs to be the file content. So we're going to come over to, to Power Automate. It's going to give us the file content. And this is coming from when a file is created, which is the step above here. We want to get that file content. That's going to be our body. So the next piece we need to do is we need to authenticate. Like you don't want just anybody, you know, uploading a file to Dynamics. What we're going to do is we're going to authenticate. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to show the advanced options. Authentication we're going to use is Active Directory OAuth. And then authority is fine. The tenant, we're going to go ahead and put in the tenant ID. Let me go ahead and grab my tenant ID. Uh, and then we'll paste that in there. The audience is going to be your URL, your base URL of your Dynamics instance. So we can go back to our notepad. And I just want the HTTPS base URL. So we're going to go here and we're going to paste that in the audience. Now, one thing to make sure of, do not make sure you don't have a, the forward slash at the end of it. That'll wreck it every time. It'll cause it to fail. So just, just make sure that you don't have the, the uh, forward slash there. Client ID is going to be that same client ID we've been using. So we'll come here to the application client ID. We're going to get, one, get that. And we're going to paste that in there. Credential type is going to be our secret. So if we come back to our notepad, I saved our secret up here. Copy that. And then we'll come back here and put our secret in there. And then we'll save that. So believe it or not, that's pretty much it. So let's, let's see if we can get this to run now. I'm going to go ahead. Let me just name this um, file upload in queue. Go ahead and save that just so I know what it is. And then what we're going to do is we're going to test it. So the way I'm going to test it is I've got my OneDrive is, is here. So this, this is my... OneDrive, and I'm in the upload folder of my OneDrive. So I'm going to drop a file in here, and we should see it run. So I'm going to go ahead and press the test button just so we can manually test that. There we go. So it's waiting on my file. Let me pull my folder back up. And then I'm going to drag a vendor's v2 file that I created earlier. And we should see it kick off here in just a second. So I'm going to pull this out of the way just so we can see it. We're going to see the flow. It'll kick off here and run. And so notice our flow ran. So if we go back to Dynamics, let me close this out. Close this out. And then let me hit Refresh. And there's our import file there that we just, just did. Okay? So, so as you can see, it's really simple to create these flows or a logic app to do this. It's just a two-step logic app. So just pick your pick your trigger and then put that HTTP block in there and the, and the file's gonna upload into Dynamics, okay? So if you're not that familiar with the data management piece that I showed you, I'm gonna post a video right here. I'll put a link right here to that video that's gonna show you how to use this a little bit better. It'll give you some background on it, so maybe it'll help you understand the rest of this a little bit better, okay? So hope you found some value in this. Thanks a lot. See you later.